I'm Patrick Brandon from EO Connecticut. Uh, the company I founded was Contract Medical Manufacturing, and my message is be kind and respectful to each other. Treat each other well. Awesome. Take talk. Let's talk. This is the Mitten Shah Show. We've asked the same seven questions to entrepreneurs from all over the world to figure out what makes us tick. Take talk. Let's talk. Um, Patrick, welcome. Thanks a lot for doing this. Thank you for offering. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, uh, where are you from? And if you had to explain what your business does to a six-year-old child, what would you say? Okay, so I'm from uh, Killingworth, Connecticut, small town in Connecticut in the USA. Um, we assemble and test and package medical devices for the medical device industry. Okay, so, it's, so you make medical devices. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what got you started on this journey? Uh, fed up with corporate. Uh, I just started, I got out of college, went right into corporate America into a big uh, medical device company, which was good in some ways as far as giving me an education of how the industry operates, but then I just got fed up with the politics and, and sort of the, the rigidness of the structure. Mm -hmm. And I uh, always felt like I wanted to have a business of my own. I had my first small business when I was a teenager. I had a landscaping business. I um, saw my friends going to McDonald's and doing those types of things, and I didn't want anything to do with it. So. Bought a lawnmower, stuck it in my little Volkswagen Beetle, and, and got accounts and just did lawn mowing for a couple of years to, to make money. And then went to college and got out of college, went right into corporate, and then just had that tug to get back into more of an entrepreneurial setting. So that's nice. what, what took me here. Yeah, sweet. What keeps you up at night, and what makes you jump out of bed in the morning? <sighs> what keeps you up at night? Um, so I'm in a really highly regulated industry, um, mm -hmm. especially in the U.S. I, mean, I think worldwide more and more now, but with the FDA, the regulations are, are very uh, strict for, for good reason. They mm -hmm. protect the, the, mm -hmm. you and I, right? Mm -hmm. um, finding the right people uh, in a smaller size company, I've got like 30 people, so it's just very hard to recruit sometimes and compete against some of the larger companies. A lot of people still have that sense that the larger companies are more stable, that they offer better benefits, which in some cases mm -hmm. they do, a lot of cases they do. Mm -hmm. So I think finding that right team, and, and at the size I'm at right now, um, it's critical to have good managers that can actually manage, and, and I haven't really done well with that in mm -hmm. some cases. I've got good people, but a lot of taskmasters, but not a lot of people that can then manage people or lead other people. So a lot of that falls on me. So I'm kind of feel like I'm stuck right now. So that probably keeps me up at night more than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and what was the second, I'm sorry, the follow up? What makes you jump up and out of bed oh, in the morning? Um, so I, I'm really driven to create jobs for, for people. And I've been in manufacturing my whole career and I've seen how hard it is and how people work so hard at the lower levels of the organizations and, and don't make a lot of money in most cases. And they're not always treated as well as they should be. So I think that to me is just that job creation and giving people a place that might be not quite what they're used to in other places where they've been and try to treat them with more respect. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the, the values that we have in EO, I, I try to drive into my business mm -hmm. and, and just mm -hmm. treat people the way I feel like they should be treated mm -hmm. um, and show them that they are value to the organization and then they have a, an incredibly important part of the organization and our success. So um, that part of it, I spend most of my time right now just on culture within my own company and, and, and really trying to reinforce that because I think a lot of times it's a trust issue. I don't think my people necessarily trust it, especially when they come in new because of you know, in some cases, unfortunately, manufacturing can still be sort of just one of those hard driving sort of uh, sort of stuck in the in the past. The way they treat people and look at people is just this this resource that's you know disposable. If they don't do the job, you just sort of get rid of them and park mm -hmm. somebody else in the seat and just mm -hmm. keep going until you get the right person. And I've you know the best a fair amount of my people. I've had a lot of people with me for the entire journey. Um, I know their kids. I've seen their kids grow up. I've been to funerals. I've been to weddings. I've mm -hmm. been to all these mm -hmm. things. And like I really you know that's the culture I want to create create in my business. So mm -hmm. that's what. So creating a family. Uh, I mean, in, in some sense, it's a little cliche, I guess, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's it's. I have the opportunity to do it. This is my mm. my business to run the way I'd like to run it, and mm -hmm. I'd like to have people come in. And like I said, we spend a lot of time on our core values and mission, and, and just reinforcing those with mm -hmm. folks, and, and, and seeing if we can get people on board. And some of the behaviors are, are natural for people, and some of them are just things that maybe they haven't really been exposed to too much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, and they just haven't really been asked to, to, to behave a certain way or to think or consider the way that they do things. Um, the communication skills aren't always there. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's it's hard for people to communicate well when things go wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's easier when everything's going fine. They could, hey, how you doing? Great, yeah. great, great. Yeah. But when things hit the fan, you really need to be able to communicate effectively and well and not close down and shut down on each other. So that's, you know, but it's fun. I mean, it's fun yeah. to see that, that progress. Um, it's frustrating sometimes. You know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes you think you're making progress and then it just backfires on you and yeah. you got to sort of sit back and then come at it from a different angle. But yeah. that's it's, it's, it's fun. So following up on that, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you started? Oh, I don't know where to start. Um, 
I look back at some of the stuff I did early on and I'm amazed that I'm still in business for, for a number of reasons. So I, I feel like the the biggest change in me was becoming comfortable being sort of the guy, mm -hmm. right? So just having comfort being the person leading the charge and, and understanding and realizing that some people need to be led. You know, I mean, some people yeah, are very yeah. comfortable in that and, they, and they, that's what they're looking for. And, you know, being comfortable with myself in that role, gaining confidence in, in, in that role of leadership and, and, and feeling confident in leading people and, and, and giving them a good example to follow and everything. So I think if I look back, I would have spent a lot more time a lot earlier on, on that type of part of the business rather than just worry about getting product out the door and, 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 you know, I mean, it's important, you know, obviously cash flow is king. You have to have cash flow to do everything, but I spent so much time just in that part of the business and kind of missed a lot of the other things. Probably didn't take care of people as well as I should have back then um, in order to really have the culture ingrained and now I'm kind of trying to, to, to backtrack into that. Some other mistakes you might have made that others can learn from? Um, you know, I, I think there's, there's a lot of information out there about businesses, especially if entrepreneurs are trying to scale a business and it's very predictable what happens at different phases of a business. So the information's out there, I just didn't realize it was out there until it was kind of too late and I, I blew past a couple of phases, didn't put the right things in place at the time and then they never, the problems never go away, they just sort of get bigger and they get more complex. So if you can address those, if you're smart enough to get onto that information as you're going through or before you're going through those stages and you plan properly for those phases of scaling, then I think that's critical to the business. So you know, I'm going back and you know, maybe a, a, a phase three company at the size I am, I'm going back trying to fix things I didn't do when I went through phase two and, and, and you know, needed to put good managers in place and, and get those managers trained and, and, and get them embedded in the culture and everything. And I'm sort of doing that now, but I need them to be functional now. Mm -hmm. So that puts a lot more load on me, you know what I mean? And, and, and it, it slows the business growth down, mm -hmm. tremendously slows the business growth down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Some of the instances in your business life that you're most proud, happy, satisfied, content with? Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a 30 person company that has Fortune 50 medical device companies on their customer roster, which is, to me, something I'm pretty proud of. And you know, also, a highly regulated industry. Yeah, yeah. and highly yeah. regulated. And then the other thing I'm proud of is, is we've, we've assisted some startup companies and some entrepreneurial companies in commercializing their products and bringing them to market and then ultimately allowing them and then helping them, assisting them to exit. And, mm -hmm. and that was part of their entrepreneurial mm -hmm. journey and dream. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's at both ends of the spectrum, but I think both of those I'm very proud of. And just having the staying power to be around after, you know, we're 12 years in uh, as a company. So, you know, that alone, if you look at the statistics, that's that's not a given either. You know, I mean, yeah. a lot of companies don't make it that far. Some, some by design don't make it that far because they exit before that, but a lot of them just don't make it that far because of, you know, they, they don't, they don't have the ability to stay in power. So, mm -hmm. yeah. The Tim Ferriss question. So if you had a billboard and you could put on any message, what would your message to humanity be? Ooh. Uh, it'd be kind. Yeah. <laughs> Respect. Yeah. I think the world is, is unfortunately, we're, we're, we're probably not contributing in a positive way right now in the U.S., but uh, I, I think that that's being lost in some cases, and I think yeah. that's just it's a, it's a good way to live a life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's, there's, there's a loss of respect. I think there's just a lot of, a lot of sort of unnecessary anger in the mm -hmm. world right now. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not sure, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, we're not, we're not helping things right now, unfortunately, but that's a whole other interview and conversation, but um, <laughs> be kind. Be kind and respect. Well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. How has EO made a difference in your family, personal community, oh. or business life? So I've been in EO almost four years, and I would say the area that it's affected Directly the least is is really my my business so far the, mm -hmm. the area that's affected the most is my personal and my family life And mm -hmm. it has allowed me to grow so much personally and with my family um, Yeah, I, I realized early on with EO the amount of baggage I've been carrying since I was a kid things mm -hmm. that I hadn't talked about in, in 20 30 years that mm -hmm. were just sort of tugging at me and slowing me down, mm -hmm. even uh, unconsciously doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. The ability to just be vulnerable and share that information and get it off my chest and get it out there and, and, and actually, you know, in some cases, solve things that you know, I would say people spend sometimes years of their lives in, in therapy for. I was able to just offload yeah. some of that stuff very yeah. early on yeah. in this journey. So the, the, per, the personal growth, I think, and then the growth that I feel that I have, and hopefully this is seen by others, is just in, in my ability to lead, my ability to feel more comfortable in this role and more confident in the role as leader. Um, it's been tremendous for me. And then the exposure I've gotten to, to people like you, and, and, and this is my third GLC, so I mean, I've had exposure to people from all over the world, which is just a really fun 
energetic, you know, environment to be a part of, and then you know the the, the relationships that you form. So yeah. um, definitely for me, it's been more on the personal and, 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 and family side right now, which I think also obviously spills over to the business. I think that's the, that's the whole model, right? Mm -hmm. It's the holistic approach to the person mm -hmm. is, is not just the business owner, but but as a person, as a, as a you know a family person, whatever. So I think that uh, that that's been the biggest impact for me. Fantastic, Patrick. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. From growing it. as yeah. a person to yeah. growing the oh, okay. my my time to work. <laughs> yes, your time.